Hello everyone, I'm Rukeng Yang, and my talk today is about public key encryption scheme with receiver selective opening security in the multi-channel setting. This is based on joint work with Jun Zhuolai, Zheng Anhuang, Man Hou Ao, Qiu Liang Xu, and Willy Su Silo. So we are all very familiar with the notion of public key encryption. Generally, it consists of three algorithms, namely the key generation algorithm, which produces a public key and secret pair. The encryption algorithm, which encrypts a message to get a subtext, and the decryption algorithm, which decrypts the subtext to get a message. Its correctness requires that the decryption algorithm can always recover the encrypted message from an honestly generated subtext. And its security requires that no one could learn anything from subtext. This can be defined by requiring that the output of an adversary who can see the public key and suffer text can be simulated by a simulator that takes nothing as input. So in practice, a public key encryption scheme is usually deployed in a multi-user setting. That is, there are many users with different public keys and secret keys. And a sender sends a message to a receiver by encrypting the message on the receiver's public key. So in this case, it's common that some receivers may be corrupted and their secret keys will be revealed to an adversary. And in this case, uh, it seems infeasible to protect messages that are sent to the corrupted receivers. But we still hope to protect those messages that are sent to the uncorrupted users. A PKE scheme that can provide such uh, such security guarantee is said to have Receiver Selective Opening Security, or ISO Security for short. So formally, the adversary for the ISO security will first receive a list of public keys, and then the adversary will specify some message distribution. And then the adversary will receive some Chinese subtext encrypted messages sample from this distribution. Then the adversary is able to corrupt some users and receive their secret keys and messages sent to them. Finally, the adversary will output something. Security requires that output of the adversary can be simulated by a simulator that only takes an input all messages sent to the corrupted receivers. So that's the definition of ICO security. Standard semantic security it's not enough to imply ISO security. And there are many works constructing public key encryption schemes with ISO security. However, in all these works, they only consider a single channel setting. That is, each public key can only be used to encrypt one channel message to, into a one channel, uh, into one channel subtext. For the standard semantic security, such single challenge security does apply the more realistic multi channel security by a standard hybrid argument. But it's unknown if this equivalence still holds for the ISO security. In this work, we formally study PKE scheme with ISO security in the multi channel setting. Uh, in this in this setting, the, uh, each public key will be used to generate multiple channel uh, subtext. So formally, uh, for the definition of ISO security in the, in the multi-channel setting, the adversary will receive multiple channel subtext for each public key, and the security still requires that the output of the adversary can be simulated by a simulator that only takes the input or uh, messages sent to the corrupted receivers. So that's the definition of ISO security in the multi chain setting. And now we are ready to present our main results. So we first show that ISO security in the single chain setting does not imply ISO security in the multi chain setting by giving a counter example that it's ISO secure with only one chain of text but it's not secure even if the public key is used to encrypt two channel messages. Then we construct a security key scheme in the key chain setting for arbitrary polynomial key. 
Uh, we also give a lower bound on the security length for any PKE scheme that is also secure in the kitchen setting. And construct a concrete PKE scheme that nearly satisfies this lower bound. So let's start with our current example. The current example is built on a semantic circuit PKE scheme that additionally satisfies the following three properties. First, we require that the PK scheme has only one valid secure key for each public key. Also, we require that it is easy to verify if a public key security pair is valid. And finally, we require that the scheme has a perfect correctness. Such PK scheme can be instantiated by, for example, the algorithm encryption scheme. So now with this PK scheme E, we can construct our counter example, uh, counter example pair as follows. So the key generation algorithm of the counter example pair will will first produce uh, will first produce two independent public key security pair of E. <clears throat> the public key of pair will contain both public keys of E, and the secret key of pair is exact uh, is exactly one of the two possible secret keys of E. Then to encrypt uh, a bit, the encryption algorithm will encrypt the message using the encryption uh, encryption algorithm of E with the both public keys. And the subtext contains both small subtexts of E. Finally, to decrypt a subtext, the decryption algorithm will decrypt one small subtext with the given secret key. So the scheme is proved to have absolute security in the single channel setting in precious works. And to see this, recall that the those three for the ISO security in the single channel setting will first receive n public keys, and then it specifies a distribution of n messages. Then the those three can receive n channel subtext that encrypts this, uh, that encrypts these n messages under the pu n public keys. Then the those three can grab some users and receive their secret keys and messages into them. And finally, the adversary output something. To simulate the adversary output, the simulator will invoke the, the adversary as a subroutine and simulate its view in the real world. In particular, the simulator will first generate any public keys and send them to the adversary. Then it returns uh, the distribution returned from the adversary. Then the simulator will sends n channel subtext to the adversary and crafts the users specified the adversary. Then on receiving the messages sent to these corrupted users, the simulator will send them to the adversary and also it sends one secure key for each corrupted user. Finally the simulator just output what the adversary outputs. So when we have noted that the simulator does not know the channel messages when generating the channel subtext. So the question is how the channel subtext are generated. To do so, the simulator will generate some AU from the channel subtext. That is, each of the channel subtext will contain both an encryption of 0 and an encryption of 1 under the basic encryption scheme E. Such AU from channel subtexts are indistinguishable from uh, from honestly generated ones due to the semantic security of the underlying basic encryption scheme E. Also, in the open phase, the simulator will not uh, tr uh, send one or two possible uh, a random uh, a random secret key from one or from two possible secret keys to the other three, and instead it will send the one that uh, decrypt the channel subtext to the correct message. For example, assuming that the first user is corrupted, then the simulator will set SK1 to be SK11 if the message uh, sent to the first user is B1, and it will set SK1 to be SK12 if the message sent to the first user is 1 minus B1. So in this case, so, so in this case, the simulator's cheating behaviors can't be 
um, detected by the adversary, and and the adversary will just output what it outputs in the real world. So the simulator can succeed in simulating the adversary's output for the ISO security. Okay, so now assuming that the PKE scheme pair is used to encrypt two messages for each public key. And next, we will explain why the above simulation strategy does not work in this case. So, uh, so again, the simulator can invoke the adversary as a subroutine, and it can send n public keys and two n channel self text to the adversary. Also, in the opening phase, it can uh, send it can send one secure key and two messages for each corrupted users to the adversary. As before, the simulator can set the channel self text as ill formed ones. That is, each channel self text contains an encryption, um, both an encryption of zero and an encryption of one under the basic encryption scheme E. Also, the simulator will try to send the suitable secret key that um, decrypt the channel self text to the correct messages. However, it can uh, it can't always succeed in doing this. To see this, uh, assume uh, again that the first user is corrupted. Then the, uh, the simulator can set SK1 to be SK11 if the messages sent to the first user are B11 and B12. Also, it can set the uh, set SK1 to be SK12 if the messages sent to the first user are 1 minus B11 and 1 minus B12. However, it can't find the suitable secure key if the messages sent to the first user are 1 minus P11 and P12, or they are P11 and 1 minus P12. So now to transform the above intuition into a formal impossibility proof, we consider the following concrete adversary. The adversary will output a uniform distribution after receiving any public keys. And then it set the set of corrupted users as the hash of public keys and the channel self text it received. Finally, in the last step, the adversary will output public keys, channel self text, and uh, secret keys for corrupted users it received in the game. So now consider any simulator. We do not re restrict its behaviors here. But due to the security of the hash function. The simulator has to determine all public keys and channel self texts before corrupting users. As otherwise, the simulator has to invert the hash, func the hash function or find a collision for it. Also, the simulator uh, also in the last uh, uh, also in the last step, the simulator can choose the secret key for each corrupted user from only a set of two possible secret keys due to the secret key uniqueness of the underlying underlying basic encryption scheme E. And then by the perfect perfect correctness of E, the simulator can open the fixed subtexts for each corrupted user to only two possible messages. But the message pair can be sampled in four different ways. So with probability 1 over 2, the simulator will fail in simulating the adversary's will. As we are considering any simulator, so if uh, so for the PK scheme pair, if we if the adversary works as on the left hand side, then there does not exist any simulator that can simulate its output with an overwhelming probability. So that's our current example that separates the ISO security in a single channel setting and that in the multi channel setting. Next, we give a construction of ISO secure PK scheme in the P channel setting. So the standpoint of our, our construction is the constant pair uh, 
counter example we just mentioned. So recall that security of the scheme comes from the fact that the simulator is able to generate an ill-formed change of text, which contains an inclusion of 0 and an inclusion of 1 under the basic encryption scheme E. And then it can open this, this subtext to any bit by choosing a suitable security key. This simulation strategy does not work if the number of possible security keys is, is much less than the number of possible messages sent to each user. So the scheme is not secure in the two-chain setting. To solve this problem, we increase the number of possible security keys by repeating the scheme pair for key times. The new scheme pair program uh, is works as, uh, works as follows. So the key generation algorithm of pi prime will run the key generation algorithm of pi for key times, and the public key and secure key of pi prime will contain key, all key public keys and secure keys of pi. Then to encrypt one bit, the encryption algorithm of pi prime will first share the message into key parts, and then. It, um, and then it will encrypt each part under the encryption algorithm of pi, and the subtext of pi prime will contain all key subtext of pi. Finally, to decrypt a, a, a subtext, the decryption algorithm of pi prime will first decrypt each part of the subtext to recover a share. Then it can obtain the message from these key shares. Okay. So that's how the scheme pair prime works. And to see why the scheme is ISO secure in the keychain setting, or alternatively, how a simulator can generate key uh, from change of text and open them to any key bit, we consider the following simulator. The simulator will generate all parts of these key change of texts honestly, except the ones on the diagonal. So um, that is to say, uh, for example, uh, to generate uh, CT1, the simulator will first sample K minus one random bits, and then encrypt them with the second parts to the case part of the public key. For the part on the diagonal, the simulator will put an L formed uh, subtext of the underlying scheme pi there. That is, each, each part on the uh, diagonal will contain an encryption of 0 and an encryption of 1 under the basic encryption scheme E. So in this case, for each public key, it, only, uh, it is only used to generate one cheating subtext. So we can choose, so the simulator can choose the uh, suitable secure key part that decrypt each, uh, this uh, cheating subtext to any bit. So uh, the simulator can simulate the adversary wheel just as before. And uh, finally, it can simulate the adversary's output in the real world. Okay, so that's our construction of ISO security key scheme in the multi channel setting. And next, uh, we, we will show uh, the lower bound on the security lens for any PKE scheme with ISO security in the key channel setting. So recall that in our counter example, the main observation is that if the number of possible security keys for each corrupted user is less than the number of possible messages sent to, to him, then the scheme can't be ISO secure. So now considering a PK scheme with security key length L, then the number of possible secure keys will not exceed exist exceed two to L. Also, if the message length is M, and considering a key key challenge setting, then the number of possible messages will equal to two to M K. So if we hope the scheme to have ISO sec security in the key change setting, we must have L is greater than or equal to MK. 
That's our lower bound on the on any PKE scheme with ISO security in the kitchen setting. We also give a construction of ISO secure PKE scheme <coughs> in the kitchen setting whose secure key lens uh, nearly satisfies this lower bound. This is constructed by repeating the Kerm Shoop increment scheme 40 times, and we also use some additional tricks to reduce the security length. But for time reason, we are not able to cover the construction details here. Please see our full paper for more details. Also, in this talk, we will consider trolling plain text security. And in our paper, we also consider the trolling self text attack. Um, please also refer to our paper if you are interested. Okay, so that's all. Thanks for your attention.